These are the artifacts presented by Team KYT from the Royal Academy. The artifacts that they have chosen are the coins of Bhutan. Like most systems of exchange, trading in Bhutan can be traced to the barter system. Bhutan first began to produce coins in silver towards the end of the 18th century, mainly for use in trade with the plains. These were followed by coins struck in alloyed silver, copper or brass, which were used for minor local purchases. In 1929, during the reign of the second king, fine machine struck silver and copper coins were introduced into circulation, marking the beginning of modern coinage in Bhutan. This artifact is presented by Gunjan Kochar from Kendriya Vidyalaya, IIT Pavai. The artifact is a sculpture that can be seen on the facade of the temple. This 11th century Shilhara temple, constructed in the Bhumija style, is made of local black basalt. The Ambarnath temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva with numerous images and panels indicating the prominence of Shaivism. The Shivaling, a symbol of Lord Shiva, is installed in the Garbhagiriya. Symmetry is an important aspect of the temple which can be seen throughout with all kinds of geometric designs, sculptures, dancing figurines, etc. This is the artifact presented by Darsh Lakhani, Kashyap Agarwal and Pradyume Tekriwal from Mayo College. The artifact is the bust of Bodhisattva from the 2nd century AD Gandhara. The prince Siddhartha eventually went on to become Buddha and led to the religion of Buddhism being founded upon his teachings. Bodhisattva is an individual striving to reach enlightenment but doesn't so that they can teach others. Bodhisattvas tend to be more richly adorned than depictions of a Buddha. They are adorned with flowing robes, bracelets, necklaces, elaborate hairdos, and like our artifact, is seen sporting a moustache. The Gandharan sculpture is reminiscent of Hellenistic sculptures with naturalistic attention to anatomical details. This is the artifact presented by Devagya Kasera, Pal Dharyani, and Viren Singh from Mayo College. The artifact chosen by the team is the iconic bust of Nefertiti. An incredibly realistic, unique stylization of the arts of her period, the bust of Nefertiti is the most copied work of ancient Egypt. Her crown symbolized that she had equal, if not more, authority than her king, which put her in a unique position for a woman of her time. This limestone sculpture was found in the workshop of the artist Tutmos and is believed to be worked on in the year 1345 BCE, lending to her having one eye incomplete. It was also theorized that the artist had intentionally left out the eye because Nefertiti was blind to his love for her. This is the artifact presented by Darshan Jain, Neil Tyagi and Pranjal Vashishtha from Mayo College. This artifact is the Harappan statue of the Jasper torso. The male nude torso was made out of red sandstone during the Indus Valley Civilization. It is one of the various statuettes that gives us a glimpse into the IVC period. The many theories surrounding it relate the torso to the beginning of the worship of Shiva. A similar figure who has been theorized to be featured on one of the Harappan seals. As well as theories stating the new disposition as being the start of Jainism as a practice. The lack of statues from the IVC period and the combination of highly stylized craft continues to leave historians and art lovers all around the world dazed. 
This is the artifact presented by Chris L. Johnson from Kendriya Vidyalaya, Patam Shift 2. He has chosen to review the coins of 20th century India and track its evolution. This exhibit shows coins from four different series of issued coins, the Frozen series, the Anna series, the Naya Pesa series and the Pesa series. These are the coins that were issued after India's independence, including coins we even use today. Coins in India have had a crucial place in history, from dynasties being recognized by their coins to Indian coins being one of the first in the world to feature queens as early as the 2nd century BC. This artifact is presented by Dishita Srivastava from Ramakrishna Vidya Mandir. The artifact chosen is a Jain Chatustika. The Jain Chatustika is a sandstone sculpture that was built somewhere between 11th and 12th century AD. At that time, Gwalia was under the reign of King Ratnapal. There are Yakshas and Yakshanis that protect the spirits of the Tirthankaras guarding them. All of the Tirthankaras are iconography depicted in the same sitting posture with their hands resting in their laps. They are all clothless, have a broad chest, a top bun and elongated ears reaching their shoulders. This artifact is presented by Anvi Sen from 7i World School. The artifact she has chosen is the entire Samadhi of Rani Lakshmi Bai, the location of her final resting place. Rani Lakshmi Bai, popularly known as Indian's Joan of Arc, was renowned as one of the leading personalities in the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Married at an early age of seven, her studies growing up included shooting, horsemanship and fencing. Setting one of the highest standards, she became the ruler of Jhansi at just 18 years. This is the artifact presented by Manvik Sai, Viraj Saran and Abhya Biplani, students of Mayo College. Narasimha is the fourth avatar of Lord Vishnu, the preserver god in the Hindu Trimurti. He shows up on odd occasions to save the world from a haughty devil figure. Narasimha's half-lion, half-man appearance permitted him to dodge the gift the evil god Hiranya Kashapu got that he was unable to be killed by any human and creature. The research done by the students brought out the comparison between the avatars of Vishnu with Darwin's theory of evolution how all life started from an aquatic being, similar to that of Vishnu's first avatar, Matsya, quite literally meaning fish, and how his last avatar will be that of Kalki, a technologically advanced man, something that we humans are close to achieving. This artifact is presented by team SRCK from the Royal Academy of Bhutan. The artifact of their choice are the traditional Pazap's Am. Literally meaning the brave warriors of Pogana, Pazaps fought the advancing Tibetans more than 17 times and were the guardians of Bhutan throughout the 17th century. The finest battle garments of Ghos with beautiful patterns tied with coloured ribbons, white, blue and red boots and their metal helmets are decorated with flags and a long splendid sword is tied around their waist. This is the artifact presented by team Twenpa Puenzi from the Royal Academy. The artifact chosen is a statue that is inspired by a traditional Bhutanese folkloric story. The painting of Twen Pa Puen Zi adorns almost every Bhutan household, symbolizing harmony and unity in a family or society. 
The story in itself symbolizes independence despite the difference in size and strength of the animals. It is an epitome of friendship, cooperation and good relation without considering hierarchy, strength, power or even size. The painting teaches most of the Bhutanese values of etiquettes like respect for elders, cooperation and generosity. This artifact is presented by Dwarkesh from Holy Innocent High School Junior College. He has chosen a temple of the Toda tribe as his subject of interest. The tribe is settled in the Nilgiri hills of Uti and is a pastoral tribe. The architecture of this temple is one to marvel at. Their religion revolves around the all-important buffalo. One particularity about the tribe is that, as per tradition, rituals must be performed over all dairy-related activities, from milking the cows, to feeding the cattle, to churning butter. They also practice polyandry, meaning several men, usually those who are brothers, share one wife. This artifact is presented by team TDKT from the Royal Academy of Bhutan. The artifact is the statue of Zabdrung Namgyal. It was Zabdrung Namgyal, a great spiritual personality and leader, who brought an end to the warring factions and unified the country of Bhutan into one nation, establishing a theocracy in 1652 introducing a new code of law. This is the artifact presented by C. Pranesh from Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangatan, Sector 8, R.K. Puram, New Delhi. His artifact of choice is that of a Chola era statue of Lord Vinayagar. The Chola is mostly concentrated on complex iconography, and intricate ornamentation of sculptures. Chola art, despite maintaining a defined stylistic convention, should be remembered for conceiving disparate local traditions. The iconography of Lord Vinayagar is related to his abilities to vanquish and destroy obstacles. He is often portrayed with conch shells, an axe, a rope or noose, and sometimes a trident. As similar to other Hindu gods, he may also be depicted with or on a lotus, a Hindu symbol for enlightenment and divinity. This artifact is presented by Arav Jain, Suhan Modi and Dharyash Patwari from Mayo College. The artifacts of their choosing is the bust of Gautam Buddha from the 5th century Mathura. The style of Mathura art spans over 10 centuries with the most distinctive contributions by Kushana and Gupta dynasties. Buddha in this style of art was inspired by early Yaksha figures. Yaksha figures are basically male nature deities. This artifact is presented by Team YTSN 2022 from the Royal Academy of Bhutan. The artifact is a statue of Guru Rinpoche. Guru Rinpoche is said to have been miraculously born in India in the middle of Lake Dana Kosha on a lotus flower, symbolizing the original purity of his mind. On one occasion, he went to a nunnery where he taught the dharma to the nuns and turned all 500 of them into his students. But when the local king and his ministers learned a man was in the nunnery, they presumed he was a fake teacher and sent him soldiers to arrest Guru Rinpok. The king sentenced him to be burned at the stake but even though he was left to burn for seven days, when they went to check on him, they found him sitting on a lotus in the middle of the lake. Guru Rinpoche was famous for subjugating gods, demons and spirits which would constitute the subtle psychic energy of country. 
These artifacts are presented by Team JR Squared from the Royal Academy of Bhutan. Their artifacts are the statue of Lamho Ekajati and the painting of the Buddhist cosmology. The deity Ekajati in Sanskrit literally means one plated woman. It means that she has only one knot of hair. She is also said to be one of the 21 Taras. She is said to be the protector of secret mantras. She is iconographically portrayed with three eyes, with two eyes closed and only one open, one tooth, one breast and is seen dancing on the corpse of a human. The Buddhist painting, on the other hand, depicts the Buddhist point of view of how the universe came into being. The main focal point in the painting is the Mount Meru, the abode of the gods, surrounded by the elements. It is said that we are outside these barriers, and if we want to be reborn inside Mount Meru, we must cross these barriers.